This is respect sport, you know. This is not trash talking sport. This is respect. So, like I told you before, that I was. Mama, mama, mama. I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna backwards. put him. When it comes to the UFC, you've got a mix of fighters who hold on to the values of respect, the traditional message of martial arts. All this money, I'm gonna send Dustin Poirier. But then, you've got the others who couldn't care less and are more than willing to go that extra mile to show their utter disrespect towards their opponents. That said, these are the most disrespectful moments in UFC history. First up, we've got Stylebender bringing the heat with an unforgettable mockery of his opponent right there on the grandest stage. Now, Adesanya is known for his flair, both before and after a fight. He's all about the drama thanks to his over-the-top entrances. The Undertaker. But he did something that caught people's attentions at UFC 287. The UFC 287 main event was a big deal. It was the fourth time Adesanya faced off against his rival, Alex Pereira. The belt, I'm coming for his head. Now, Adesanya had lost the last three fights against Pereira, twice in the kickboxing ring and one UFC L he took, even though he was low-key winning the match. But rewind back to 2017, their second face-off. Pereira landed a mad punch that knocked Adesanya into dreamland. But guess what? Pereira's little dude who was just a child back then pulled off a savage move to mock Adesanya as he lay knocked out cold. Fast forward six years to UFC 287 and Adesanya didn't forget. This was like a walk in the park. No, no. This was a walk in the garden. The Brazilian into full snooze. But Adesanya had some payback in mind. First, he imitated Pereira's famous archery skills, just to add insult to injury. Then he walked over to one side of the cage, pointed at Pereira's son, and flopped down playing dead, just like little Pereira did back in 2017. Safe to say, Adesanya doesn't let bygones be bygones, no matter who's in the ring. Petty bro. I'll whoop your ass if your dad don't do it for you. And he closed the chapter on this one in epic style. This was like a walk in the park. No, no. This was a walk in the garden. Speaking of closing the book on your opponents, we gotta talk about Randy Couture. Now, when Randy Couture and Tito Ortiz clashed for the undisputed light heavyweight title at the UFC 44 in 2003, the story here is a classic one. Let these dogs out, I can't always call them back. The aging hero, Randy Couture, versus the younger, cocky Tito Ortiz. It's gonna be a tough fight. We know they're both uh, as good as they're gonna get. Both were at the top of their game, but what happened in the fight surprised everyone. Randy Couture dominated from the get-go, and four rounds in, Ortiz was clearly losing. But then, in a last-ditch effort to turn the tables, Ortiz decided to go for a Hail Mary move, a knee bar, as the clock was ticking down. Couture defended against this low percentage move and also decided to pay Ortiz back for all his past disrespects in the most humiliating way possible. He reached down and, no kidding, spanked Ortiz. But you literally spanked him. Literally spanked I mean, this guy was trapped upside down with nowhere to go and Couture gave him a playful spank to the delight of the crowd. And it just popped into my head. To spank him. So I the beach bad boy got a taste of his own medicine, and that's how you close the book on your opponent in style. Now, we all know that losing in the octagon can be tough. Am I undefeated? Yes. Mentally, I'm 12 no. I didn't lose shit. But being a sore winner? Well, that's a different ballgame, and it's even worse. You just got your revenge on your opponent, so why not squash the beef, right? But someone didn't give Ronda Rousey that memo at UFC 168. Wow, she went to shake Ronda's hand and Ronda walked away from her. Ronda was up against her arch nemesis, Miesha Tate. This wasn't just a regular rivalry, it was a full-blown feud. Tate had begun taunting Rousey and her trainer and basically brought the trash talk to a whole new Are you serious? level. I'm serious. Oh, where is he at? Now, Ronda's mission was clear. She wanted to serve up a massive plate of revenge, and boy did she do it in style. She dominated Tate and secured a third round armbar finish. It was epic, no doubt about it. The fight was over, and Tate saw this as the perfect moment to bury the hatchet, extend the sportsmanship hand of hers, and call it a day on the beef. But Ronda wasn't having any of it. Nope, she totally left Tate hanging and instead went full-blown celebration mode in her corner. Ronda's excuse was that Tate was just playing nice for the cameras and wouldn't have shaken hands otherwise. I can't shake the hand of someone who spits on my back. In the end, we love a little sprinkle of disrespect in the Osteon of UFC drama. Never disappoints. That said, let's talk about a quick but unforgettable moment of pure disrespect that went down during the Thiago Silva vs. Brandon Verrera fight at UFC 125. 
On paper, it looked like a close match, but in reality, Thiago Silva was on a whole different level. He was stronger and harder hitting, and he pretty much ran through the shell for all three rounds. You know, I'm here to do my job. I'm here to fight hard. He even did some serious damage, breaking Verera's nose along the way. But the lowest point for Verera came in the third round. Silva was in control, and Verera was basically stuck in a crouching position with no way out. So, what does Silva do? He started landing massive punches from behind, and then he had this light bulb moment. He realized Verrera was a sitting duck, so he decided to switch it up and play the bongos on Verrera's back. Yeah, he turned a UFC fighter into a drum! However, this drumming session only lasted a few seconds before Silva went back to pounding on Verrera's head with his fists. But those few seconds were a moment of epic disrespect that you just can't forget. Now, when we talk about disrespect in the UFC, one name that stands out is Nate Diaz. This guy has made a career out of showing no respect to his opponents, from trash talking them with verbal jabs to flipping them off before, during, and even after the fight. Diaz is like the king of disrespect. It's Nick Diaz Army, motherfuckers. But if we had to pick the best of the best, it's gotta be this epic moment during his fight with Kurt Pellegrino in April of 2008. In the clash, Pellegrino took Diaz down, probably thinking he had it in the bag. But Diaz had other plans. He quickly locked in a triangle choke. Now, most fighters would just focus on finishing the fight. How you can tap? Go sleep? Go sleep. But not Diaz. With that choke fully in place, he decided to take things up a notch. First, he flips Pellegrino the double bird, you know, both middle fingers up while he's stuck in that hold, and then as Pellegrino taps out, Diaz goes for a double biceps flex taunt. It's like the ultimate I don't respect you move you can make, and for Diaz, it's just another day at the office. Eat your vegetables. Anyways, if we're talking about one of the most disrespectful gestures in sports, we've got to give a nod to the legendary crotch chop. From the WWE to soccer stars like Cristiano Ronaldo, we've seen athletes pull off this move. But in the world of martial arts, this disrespectful moment happened at UFC 182. John Jones and Daniel Cormier had one of the most intense rivalries in UFC history, and it all started at a pre-fight press conference that basically turned into a full-blown brawl. he owned the place. Cormier looked crushed after the defeat, and in a later interview, Jones took his disrespect to a whole new level by saying he hoped he was crying somewhere. He basically doubled down on the disrespect. You know, last time I was uh, just fighting to win, this time I'm fighting to kick his ass. Next up, we gotta talk about Michael Bisping, because he pulled off one of the most disrespectful and downright irritating moves in UFC history, and it all went down during his clash with Jorge Rivera at UFC 127. Prior to the clash, Rivera decided to mess with Bisping's head, and boy did it work. Rivera recorded a series of videos where he taunted every single thing about Bisping, from his fighting style to his family background and even his British accent. Dick, 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 dick. He's a stupid dick. Bisping is a dick and he's such a dirty dick. It got under Bisping's skin like nothing else. Gonna get his ass kicked and he's back to the undercards after this one. So when these two finally stepped into the cage, Bisping was fired up like never before. He started by outstriking Rivera in the first round, but then things took a dark turn. Bisping landed a blatantly illegal knee to his downed opponent. He got a point deducted for that foul, but it was clear that Rivera was never going to recover from that shot. Unsurprisingly, Bisping finished Rivera with a series of strikes in the second round, but what he did next was a jaw dropper. Not only did he taunt Rivera telling him to go home loser, but he took things even further. He spat at Rivera's cornermen. That sheer level of disrespect turning Bisping into one of the most hated fighters in the entire UFC. He embraced the villain role, and as they say, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Bisping chose the latter and ran with it. Now, we've seen some seriously disrespectful moments in the UFC, but nothing quite tops the post-fight sucker punch we'll never forget. This unforgettable incident went down at UFC 113 during the bout between Paul Daly and Josh Kocek. Despite the pre-fight promise of an all-out brawl, Kocek had other plans. He used his smothering wrestling skills to essentially pin Daly down for three full rounds, not giving him a chance to land a clean strike. As the clock ticked down, Kocek, known for his trash talk, clearly said something to Daly. And here's where it gets wild. 
Right when the buzzer sounded, before the ref could even step in, Daly decided to unleash a sucker punch on Kochek as he casually walked away in celebration. It was like something out of a movie. This move shocked everyone, from the ref to the crowd that wasn't exactly pro Kochek. If, you, if you'd like Josh Koscheck, then you've not met the guy. It was the grand finale of disrespect in the UFC and probably in MMA history. Dana White wasted no time in releasing him from the promotion, and he hasn't been back since. He'll never fight in the UFC again. So that's the price you pay for carrying the title of the most disrespectful moment in UFC history. And there you have it folks, some of the most disrespectful moments in UFC history. It's your turn to chime in now. Which one of these moments do you think takes the crown as the absolute coldest? Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more epic UFC moments.